Okay, so Mishle 23, so 26 through 27, which is the end of the local cluster, I think. Uh, day two. Tana bini libcha li. My son, give your heart or your mind to me. The inecha drachai titsorna. And kri is let your eyes guard my way. The kri, the ksiv, sorry. The kri is titsorna, is guard. The ksiv is tirtsenna which is to desire, right? Kishucha amuka zona uber tsara nachria, because a zona, which we're gonna translate as a harlot, is a deep pit, uh, and a nachria, a stranger woman, is a narrow well. We're working with the, or uh, whatever, we'll go through the questions, I guess. Okay, fine, and then Sadi Gonet said, my son, hasev bini makshav elai, circle back your thoughts to me, um, and let your eyes guard my way. Uh, for a harlot is a deep pit and a stranger woman is like a narrow well. Yeah, and we noted there that he has the kaf hadimion, the, uh, um, the, the k uh, of comparison only for the second one, but he says a harlot is a deep pit. So that we thought that, that was a little strange. Okay, so our questions were, what is the relationship between the two psukim? How's the advice in Chavav tailored to the warning in Chavzayin? Chavav seems to be very general, and the Chavzayin is a specific warning. So, like, why why match it up in that way? Uh, two, what exactly is the son paying attention to when he says, uh, pay attention to me? Um, why is the emphasis on the person of the father as opposed to the content of the teachings? Three, what are these durachai that he's talking about? Four, what does it mean for your eyes to titsorna them, to watch or guard them? Five, is there significance to the Greek siv beyond the erroneous, uh, an erroneous reversal of letters? Um, here it does seem like there might be grounds to say, it would logically make sense to say, logically make sense to say uh, tirtsena. Um, but yeah, so that, that is uh, significant seemingly. And also we saw that the article translated it according to the, uh, the siv. What, if anything, is the difference between a zona and an afria? Seven, what are the consequences of becoming involved with these women? How are these consequences uh, a deep pit or a narrow well? What is the difference between the consequences? What do these adjectives add of uh, narrow and deep? Um, uh, why specify zona and afria? Is this danger, is this the specific danger he's warning against, or does this represent a later, a larger category of pitfalls? Nine, what are the Nigla Nister ways of learning this Pasuk? And 10, how does this fit into the local cluster thematically and sequentially? So first thing we did yesterday was just to attempt to see the difference between a, a Zona and a Nakriya, which we said it seems to be like they are, they can be used interchangeably, but if you're going to say one is, uh, if you're going to differentiate, it seems like a Zona is just any promiscuous woman who is, you're having relations with in a non-permissible way, whereas Nahriya seems to be another man's wife. Um, so we're gonna work with that assumption uh, uh, for now. Um, and then we said, uh, so then Sean pointed out that this definitely seems to be following uh, uh, on because it says uh, and it's the same subject matter, which is, uh, which is Znus or Minus, right? Znus is going to be in terms of the Nigla and Minus is going to be in the Nister. And we kind of got sidetracked into what that Isser is, which is uh, halakhically, Losus or Akhilavavka means letting your mind uh, be free in ways that could cause you to uproot one of the Ikarim, according to the Raman. And then Akhre Enechem is is like occupying your thoughts in, in taiva and fantasy, um, which just to clarify what we said yesterday, I mean, you obviously cannot control fantasy in the sense of like, you, or desire, but you can control whether you do activities that like focus your, your mind or cultivate or nourish like that, uh, you know, uh, uh, feed, fuel the flames, et cetera. You know, so that's the, uh, that's the flame shot of the answer. Okay, fine. Uh, are, are there any other points? Oh yeah, and then then uh, also with Sean's thing from yesterday is what does it mean? So there's so you have to guard in two ways. One is a guarding of the heart, and the other is a guarding of the eyes. And our question on that was what does that consist of? The eyes seem to make sense, which is not like exposing yourself to certain sensory things that could uh, lead you uh, into this kind of bad temptation. But then the giving your heart to me we didn't really elaborate on. I think that's a yeah. review from yesterday, yeah. Okay, so 
just to back it up, I didn't read through the whole thing, but I just want to show that the Erie makes the association that you were that you also made, which is always a good sign. Even though I, I would have been I would have been confident in the in the association no matter what, but uh, Erie says, "Oh, interesting. He does join us to the next plus up. I did not notice that. Maybe this is not the end of the local cluster. Oh, wow. Okay. We, wow. Okay. I just made a mistake. I thought that Chavches was part of the uh, the other one. All right. Well, <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I, we're not going to uh, look into it now. Uh, we could always, oh, yeah. I was just saying, maybe we should look into it now. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll let her, whatever. We'll do the Miri, the first part of the Miri at least. So he says, his hero befrat, lihishamar mihilaket bepach chelkas imre nochria. So he's warning uh, his son, his hero, he's warning his son in particular, to guard against the ensnarement of the trap of the smooth talking of the Isha Nahriya, right? So that was a phrase that was borrowed from above, yeah, in chapter two, which we read. Um, and he said, uh, This is a statement from Chazal that the eyes and the heart are the like emissaries of uh, sin. Um, as it says in the Torah, um, it says that the eyes and heart, uh, you know, are two uh, emissaries of sin. Okay, I've never heard this quote before. Where's this from? Also, there, where's Sham? Sham is in Yushami. That's why I've never heard of it. Uh, it says, um, uh, give to me your heart and your eyes, and I know, and then I will know that you belong to me. Okay, so I wanted to. This reminded me of a thing I wrote uh, uh, on partial Shlach. Hey, oh, you made it, jet lag and all. Okay, um, here you go. Um, so the uh, we're doing here are 26 and 27. Um, give, pay attention, my son, to me, or give your heart to me, and let your eyes watch uh, or keep my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit and a strange woman is a narrow well. Yeah, okay, so um, this reminded me of this excellent uh, Malbin, okay? And just in the interest of time, because we have a lot to do today, I'm gonna read it in the English translation that I that I, I wrote here. So um, it says on Los Asur Akhre Levavchem Akhre Nechem, so Torah Shabbat Pass says, Akhre Levavchem is heresy and after your eyes is nos, okay? So the Sifre says, uh, does this tell us that the eyes follow after the heart or that the heart follows after the eyes, right? In other words, what's the order there? Okay, and it's interesting that it's presupposed that there is an order. So then it says, you'll argue, is there no blind person who does all the abominations in the world? So what side does that rhetorical question support? The heart, right? The heart goes is is the origin of the things right and then the eyes follow because clearly blind people do have tithes right It'd be very uh very convenient solution uh if that weren't the case you can just blindfold yourself and then avoid all uh all, all temptation so he says uh indeed this is why the torah teaches do not explore after your heart and after your eyes this tells us that the eyes follow after the heart okay so the so i raised the question in the article uh what does it mean okay so the mob and says, and this is just a beautiful model, he says, many people are of the opinion that the heart's desire for transgression is aroused by the senses. As it says, the eye sees, the heart desires, and I think the last part of that statement is uh, the limbs complete the act. Okay, so there are statements that definitely say that, you know, the chain starts with what you see, then you desire it, and then you you, you act. Okay, and, um, and there's also like um, English proverbs, like out of sight, out of mind, uh, for, I think that cuts both ways. Okay. And also a person only desires what his eyes have seen. Okay. However, Chazal, um, goes on, however, Chazal and for the opposite, namely, were it not for the fact that the mind was seized by the pre-existing desire fueled fantasies of the heart, he would not be affected by what his eyes saw, whether in terms of going on a bad path of licentiousness or following the ways of heresy to remove himself from the fear of Hashem. If he goes on the bad path of licentiousness, this is a sign that his fantasy-based desires have already paved the way ahead of time. Likewise, this is a sign that the thoughts of iniquity have already preceded him in his heart and caused him to make light of the fear of Hashem, who sees his hidden and revealed dimensions. So what he's saying is that that it's not that, see, if you said that the eyes are the key thing, so then it would follow from there that everyone's eyes are going to arouse them in the same way. But we see that that's just not the case. So what, what determines the difference about whether your eyes arouse you is 
how you've paved the way in terms of your desires, in terms of your heart. And he's calling that the desire fuel fantasies of the heart, which are the, oops, no, no, no. Okay, thank you. And you also interrupted my share. All right, uh, um, uh, it's tsiuri uh, hataiva, the depictions of the of the desires. Okay, so that's like the fantasies. Okay, so so clearly that's going to be the the thing that determines whether one person is aroused and one person is not. Okay, so then he goes on and he quotes one of my favorite Ibn Ezra's on Los Sahmod. Okay, and if you haven't heard this Ibn Ezra, then be prepared to enjoy yourself. Okay, so so the question is uh, is okay. Lo sachmi, you shall not covet. So he says many people are astonished, astonished, astounded by this mitzvah, wondering how can a man not covet something which is which his heart and eyes find to be beautiful. Now I will give you a muscle. Okay, and this is also the foundation of CBT of cognitive behavior therapy, and this is very in line with Mishlei. Consider a peasant who is of sound mind who sees a beautiful princess. He will not covet her in his heart, desiring to sleep with her because he knows that this is impossible. This peasant will not be like the insane who think they can do impossible things like sprout wings and fly in the sky. Uh, just as a man doesn't desire to sleep with his mother consciously, even though she is beautiful because he has been raised from youth to know that she is prohibited to him, so too every rational person needs to know that neither a beautiful woman nor possessions will be found by him through his own wisdom and knowledge, but only as a portion to him by Hashem. And because of this, he will neither desire nor covet the belongings of others. Once he knows that his friend's wife has been prohibited to him by Hashem, she will be more out of reach to him than the princess in the heart of the peasant. Okay, so forget for a second the whole thing that he's saying that once you know that this is a portion by Hashem, because that's a whole other difficulty. But in terms of the principle he's saying about how desire works if this peasant knows that it's impossible to sleep with the uh with the princess so i don't think it means that he's not gonna um like fantasize okay i mean we're gonna go in that direction in a second but it means he's not gonna like you can daydream about flying but you don't actually have a desire to like just sprout wings and fly like like at least most <laughs> that's true that's true i guess the, i guess the, the depends on who which kind of creatures you hang around with uh, yeah um but uh but yeah so you don't actually actively desire it um uh because you know it's impossible okay so then so the mom quotes that and then he goes on and then brings it back to the puzzle he says on the basis of this approach the ibn ezra explained what hashem commanded you shall not desire your friend's house you should not covet your friend's wife saying that if a person diminishes the desire fueled fantasies and doesn't bring them to mind and similarly, if he continually remembers that Hashem commanded him and prohibited him and stands over him and sees all his actions, then he will not come into the grips of any desire at all, just as the peasant will not desire the princess. This is what is meant by the statement that the eyes follow after the heart. Were it not for the desire-fueled fantasies that are generated in the heart, he would not be moved by the sight of his eyes. It is for this reason that do not explore after your heart comes first, since it first must generate the fantasies of desire and the bad mitos, and only afterwards will the eyes explore. Ghazal bring a proof against those who say that the heart is only aroused by fantasies after the eyes draw them in, for even a blind person will commit tremendous abominations, even though he hasn't seen anything with his eyes. Okay, really amazing. I don't know, to me, it's like an amazing, uh, it's always great to see, you know, obviously the Torah and the Chachamim talk about psychology all the time, but you, it's always nice to see them talk about it in explicit terms, like Rabbeinu Yonah does that a lot, uh, Malvin uh, and the Meiri also do that a lot, that's kind of why I'm drawn to them. So I think this helps us answer our question, which is, um, it gives us at least a direction in give your heart, my son, to me. Okay, it doesn't say exactly what it means, but can we now like um, uh, maybe formulate what it means to give your heart to me? And the me, again, plain shot is that it's the father who's teaching the son, Musser. Anyone want to take a stab? Open it up, Oops, it's here. Yeah. Yeah, so like for this entire cluster, right? The father yeah. has been okay, good. Yeah. instructing the son in terms of certain realities. Yeah. Um, and how things are operating and how he should relate to certain things. Right. And so it's about if you direct your heart towards relating to things that way. Yeah. And then you remove these things from your sight. So right. then you will be immersed in these types of ideas that you won't be tempted to shift yeah. over. Okay, good. So I, I, that's why I was thinking also that the most conservative way to read this is he's already told you what to do with the heart, right? Which is uh, most explicitly in, um, I think the puzzle about jealousy. Um, that was in Yud Zayin. Don't let your heart be jealous of uh, sinners, but have it be jealous of those who fear Hashem all day long. And he gives you practical strategies about um, 
like not hanging out with certain people who live a desire fueled lifestyle, like the the uh, Sov Ayin and Zolay Basar, um, and uh, and gives you consequences, which will also help you with this. So he's he's saying that you really have to work on the um, cultivating the desires using these strategies that he's given to you. And then that will protect you from, um, that will be a safe, in other words, like this, it still is a good idea to avoid seeing things that awaken your desires. But I, I think the Malbim and the Pasuk are <laughs> right, that this really has to be the primary thing in terms of working on your desires. That way, even if you happen to see something that's not going to arouse you in the same way. Um, and then that segue, we haven't answered this yet, but that segues into uh, the warning about this very dire situation of the, the uh, Zona and Anakria. Yeah. Okay. Anyone want to add anything to that uh, that way of learning it? Okay. So now can we explain? Yeah. I have a slightly different way. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't have this like fully worked out. Yeah. Um, I think it's more specifically talking about the 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 trap of getting involved in sexual desires. Yeah. Um, that are not permitted to you. Right. Um, and I think it's a, when um, when a person um, like like starts doing things, like allows himself to to commit you know illicit sexual acts, um, like because the desire for it, for the, the like in the whole area is so strong, mm -hmm. um, then they're not like it's going to be extremely difficult to get out of that once you've already like, like, you know, like allowed that for, right. for, for yourself. Right. Um, so I think that's just the second topic. Okay. So let me just make sure I'm understanding this. So are, are you saying that it is uh, like a quantitative thing that the desires are extremely strong in the realm of the sexual and that's why it is like a pit in there, like it's going to be harder to break away or are you like you're saying, that or are you saying something beyond that? I think, uh, yeah. I'm okay, all right. So that's that's definitely a good first step, right? And that's yeah. why the Torah has an iser of, um, uh, I mean, that's that's why there's so many arayos, right? <laughs> that are also right. But the uh, but um, I think that that's why. I mean, the Rambam that we read yesterday with the Lusa Sirach of the Vavakon Vakar Yenefim, he did say all taiva, but like Chazal says znus, meaning fantasizing about a cheeseburger is not the same degree as fantasizing about the Isha, Nahria, and the Zona, and breaking away from the cheeseburger is also uh, much easier uh, than uh, than the, the uh, Zona and Nahria. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there is a, that's like a harkaka for this. Yeah. Right, right. Losik Rulugalus Erva. Is that what you're talking, talking about? The, uh, is that a clip of nation? Yeah, Losik Rulugalus Erva, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, there's actually several of them. There's Losik Rulugalus Erva, and then there's Yichud. Which are both to rise according to the yeah. Ramam. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So whenever you see, whenever you see, I was talking about this with someone recently, whenever you see de Orisa fences for other de Orisas, you know that that's an area that's <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, you only have a couple examples of that. Like you have Los Sahmod, which is itself a fence for um, arguably for, for stealing, and then Lotis Ave, which is a fence for Los Sahmod, you know, and then you have um, uh, all of the Isurim of creating graven images and creating uh suros for which is offense against worshiping of Odazara, you know and then also al tifnu ahelilim is you know so like Odazara theft and arayos like are areas where you have like uh del rice offenses which is a uh, you know um not counting the actual del rice offense which is market but <laughs> that's a, a different that's equivocal okay yeah and then i have a thought for the first half okay that's yeah less fleshed out I oh, hold on a second. Uh, I just want to uh, raise a question that maybe you can answer, uh, having this in mind, which is, um, we if you can answer in a way that explains the muscle of falling into a deep pit, which is um, like, actually, I mean, you'll remember what you're going to say? Yeah. I hope. Okay. So I, I want to just read the, um, I know I've read this a lot in Sajigon, but but I was reminded by Rabbi Trachman's Shir Shirim Shir about how important this is, is that in Mishle, the mashalim have to speak to the emotions as well as the mind. And we have to factor that in when we're learning it. So he says, uh, Saadi Gon in Hasadama says, and he gives this actually as one of the examples. He says, I just gotta find it. 
Euh, ta, 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 ta. Yeah, he says, um, he called, uh, da, da, da. Oh, here we go. He says, so why do we need Mashalim? <laughs> okay, Shahamon, that the, the, the masses, Kevan was the ordinary people, Kevan she yediyas hachushim etzlam krova vakala midiyas asecha, since knowledge of the senses, since like, uh, you know, your sensory uh, experience is more real to you, that's what he means krova vakala, than, than your intellectual knowledge, mipnei shekleh hachush nimtzayim behem biyetzira, because your sensory faculties are found in you from birth, Therefore, it is necessary to make mashalim in, uh, It's necessary to make mashalim to equate in their eyes the obligations of the intellect with the obligations of the senses. So, what does that mean? Bir hadavar. So when a living creature, when an animal or a human sees fire, it flees from it out of a fear that it's going to be burned. If it hears a frightening sound, it will flee from it in an instinctual way. Because these things are sensory, right? You sense the heat, you sense the sound. Therefore, when the intellect sees something that is destructive, or hears something that is harmful, and it reveals this to the psyche, uh, teva is Kafik's translation of Sadgon's word for the psyche, okay? Uh, uh, and then the intellect sees that the psyche is not relying on the intellect, uh, and doesn't accept the, the report. It, the, the intellect will speak to the psyche in a way that the psyche understands. The Omerla, and I'll say, Simlev, pay attention. This thing I'm telling you about, it's like the fire that you run away from. Um, and like the deep waters that you guard against instinctually. This is the benefit of allegories, of, of, of metaphors. To make real to the psyche the certainty of the intellect, the omrim law, and to say to the psyche, that this thing that I, the intellect, can see is harmful is, to, is like the thing that you sense with the, with the senses. That's why they call it Sefer Mishle, because it has these things. So it compares robbery, whose harm is evident to the intellect, uh, with murder, whose harm is evident to the psyche, right? Most of us would not murder anyone, but the temptation to steal something is something that we can like, you know, justify. When it says, if you steal from a poor person, it's like killing him. Uh, that's the uh, equation. And then here's the Arpasuk. It compares a uh, harlotry uh, to, or licentiousness, that the intellect sees its, its uh, corrupt, uh, corruption, it compares that to falling into a pit that the destruction is evident to the senses. It compares someone who can't control his, his, uh, his anger. I don't know if Saigon learns Ruach as anger or Psyche. Um, to a, a city that has no walls. That it's uh, its exposedness, exposure is evident to the senses. Uh, a city that is bre that has a, a, a breach wall is like a man who has no restraint for his spirit. Okay, so um, so what I what we have to do here when we hear what Isaac says, not to build up what you're saying into this like glorious thing, but whatever idea we have, 
we have to realize we're not just trying to decode the nimshal of this muscle. You have to also capture the emotional resident, re, not resident, resonance, okay, of like falling into a pit that you can't get out of because it's so deep or being caught in a well that is so, that's narrow, you know, like that's, I, I assume that what it means is like, if you fall into a pit that you just are scrunched in, like, even if it's not deep, you're stuck, you know, as opposed to a pit that's deep that you can move around in there, but it's just, you know, you can't climb out. Yeah. So how about that? Um, I think a lot of mistakes, you know, can have, will have painful consequences that are reversible. Like, let's say you offend someone. Yeah. Like, now they're going to be mad at you, and whatever consequences come from that. But right. You'll be able to repair your relationship. Right. Or let's say you make a, a bad financial decision. Yeah. You, uh, you know, and you, like, lose all your money. Right. Like, the only lasting consequence is now you don't have that money, but you can get back to where you were before. Right. Without like, you know, not without, then, then obviously it's difficult because, you know. Right. Um, but you but can fully restore your you state. Can fully restore your state. Right. But like, if you, um, if you make him like, like, like you, um, and also it's something that, you know, you can maybe like, you could maybe see coming. Yeah. But with this, it's something where like you're walking and it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and then suddenly, like man, you drop in, you like drop into a pit and you just like, you know, um, you can't get out. You and like suddenly like, you're just like stuck. But that's really like, okay. I'm confused. Uh, yeah, I was following you up until the walking along because that seems to be a different idea. Okay. Yeah. That it's sudden. Yeah. So, yeah. Or, or two imperceptible. Different two different things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so going back to what you're saying before yeah. is that uh, this is going to, so there are, okay. So fine. There are, there are hatayim, uh and bad decisions that have bad consequences, uh, but you can get out or you could backtrack. And there are other ones that it permanently or severely cripples you in terms of your ability to uh, extricate yourself. Um, like, um, uh, I'm sure you could give better examples than I'm about to give, but I think this one's going to be reliable. Is that, uh, like if you, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, let's say the average person drinks alcohol. So then that might lead to a bad decision, but like, that's not necessarily going to lead to a permanent thing. But if you take meth or, or heroin, that's going to cause certain permanent, uh, you know, changes that are going to be very, very difficult to extric extricate yourself from because of the addictive nature of the thing. Yeah, David? I have, I think, so Reed has come up with what I was saying, but yeah. I didn't explain how far this morning. No, I don't, I don't have such a good... Okay. Okay, um, fine. So so either building off that or yeah. something different. Um, so the the so the Yishah Zanar, the Yishah Nakhriya being um, that deep pit or that very narrow well. Yeah. Um, Pretty with the deep pit, I think. Um, I don't know who was going to mention earlier in the short, but how you're saying that they're also a player in this where they are going to affect you as well. So they're also what? They're a player in this, no pun intended. A player in this, is you say? In, in so far okay, as- Okay, I just didn't hear your word. Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, in so far as you're getting into trouble here, yeah. where say you could, let's say like a cheeseburger, you can, it's all about you and you can just determine how much- A cheeseburger doesn't knock on your door and say, hey. Right. <laughs> yeah. Someone else is actually going to get into this trouble. Right. So once you start engaging, it's no longer up to you. Once yeah. you started, now they're going to be able to engage right. as well. Right. And so I think that maybe part of the suggestion from Club Bob here is to don't let yourself get into that whatsoever. And I think in a similar way with that deep pit where you kind of like, you can look in like, I have no idea I'm getting myself into it. It's <laughs> uh -huh. not like a small thing where you can tell like, okay, I can take like one step in there, I can get yeah. out. There's just a steep and I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. So I think I hear too then just completely. Okay, so I have, I have a thought along those lines as well about the nature of the person. I'm gonna say though, it's also the nature of the, the scenario where a person would sin with this is that, the the okay each of these things has a slightly different thing that allows you to be attached to repeated averos with a zona it's the again okay, i'm assuming here that this is a professional uh like a, a harlot not just uh not just like a unmarried uh, girl um because that's the way it's talked talked about initially you know like there's like avoid going to her uh her door like that this is someone who you like and she has a business right so the thing about the zona she's always available and she's always going to be willing to do this. And it's no, like, it's no cost to her. In fact, it's the opposite of a cost to her, you know? So the, the availability of the Zona is what makes her a particular danger. 
and you could just go and get the zona whenever you want. The Nahria, again, assuming the Nahria is another man's wife, I think the thing that's dangerous about that is that that has to be done in secret, okay, uh, in, for both parties, you know. And I think if you look at, um, I mean, not that I've done an official survey, but from both like movies, shows, and then the unfortunate real life circumstances that I've heard where, where people commit adultery, it usually isn't a thing where it happens once and then that breaks up the marriage. Usually this goes on for a very, very long time, you know, uh, and is repeated events. And they, they succeed in keeping it secret because the whole thing has to be done. Like they know it has to be done secretly. You know, it's not like, like, uh, I don't know, like some name, some other random Avera where like, you can just like, like, you know, do it. And then, uh, and then that's it is that both. And so there's, it's, <laughs> it's secret and they have to conspire in order to do it, which gives it another force and also gives you this, uh, this feeling of, um, what do you call it? A uh, uh, false sense of security because you're taking steps to protect yourself, then it makes you feel like you can get away with it even more. Um, and then there's also, a, there's other, other psukim initially about how there's a, uh, a pleasure added from the fact that it's in secret. Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret places is pleasing. Uh, that's like the idea that um, uh, like, <laughs> Lahavdi, like the grass is greener on the other side, but like if you're doing it and it's usser, then that the, the isser gives it a pleasure, you know? Yeah. Yeah, playing on the narrow well part because it is a, dangerous. Don't play on the narrow well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, a secret act. Yeah. It's going to force you to comport yourself, right? Which is going to whenever you are like investing a lot of energy in, into making something happen. Yeah. So then the habits that form from that activity are yeah. going to be a lot stronger. Ah, uh, that's so interesting. It's going to, like, set you into like a rigid way that's going to be very hard to that's very interesting out. that's really interesting so because there's two categories then of, of difficult habits right there are the ones that are difficult to break because they are so natural and they fit right into your normal routine and then there are the ones where you go out of your way to like cultivate a uh, a bad habit that like has its own kind of unique draw because you have to like engage it in specific uh, ways uh, uh, before I call you, just I want to make an executive decision now that I've discovered that I um that uh that really the next puzzle is also in line with this and given the fact that the majority of our discussion seems to be taking this literally let's do this which is next week let's take up this pasuk or i guess these two pasukim and the next one with the derech nister um and let's leave alone the derech nister for today okay let's just focus on the derech nigla here because i think there's a lot to do in the derech nigla yeah um so just thinking about the the narrow well yeah like I thought, you know, I think like the the muscle like having like no like nothing you can do because you like can't move. Yeah. Um, I think that you know with HSH specifically, yeah. You, once you've done that, then you're just trapped about you know because now like you've done something that if it ever comes out, it's gonna like be ruinous for you. Yeah. And another person knows the secret. Yeah. And you know, doesn't necessarily like, you know, has mm. some incentive to, to that's interesting. To, to, to like to, to keep it secret, but yeah. like, you know, <laughs> that uh, could change very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And well, that that that's that does happen, right? Is that yeah. uh, you know, you see this again all the time with the celebrities, politicians, or whatever, is that that they they were involved in some sort of either affair or like liaison or whatever, and then it's kept secret. And then when someone realizes they got a profit off of it or that they want they their wrath is invoked and they, they can bring you down. That's another aspect of the fact that it involves another person with, with her own uh, priorities and wills and desires, which uh, probably is going to be more the case in the Nahria than the Zona, if that's her, you know, but it could be the Zona also. Yeah, it yeah. happened with, um, with Hamilton. Yeah. You know, he, like, he had an affair and then, um, and then the woman told her husband and then, like, then he, he was getting blackmailed and then, you know, and then, like, it, like, like, Eventually, like eventually came out and it was like like because, because once he had done it yeah. would, like you like you just trapped right know? right the cheeseburger is not going to blackmail you <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah yeah also tying into the stranger woman is like a sweet talker yeah right so okay right she is going to make you think that like this action that you're going to do with her yeah. is going to be something that's going to be constantly available to you that yeah. like is well worth your investment but in the end pun, of the day pun, yeah right it's a very narrow well and like a narrow well yeah. doesn't have a lot to draw out from it so yeah. like this thing that looks like such a great thing actually ends up being something that 
has very little uh -huh. depth. In so that's interesting. Stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the, uh, if narrow means shallow, then you'd be right. I don't, I don't know if the narrowness mm -hmm. indicates, right? Because a lot of the wells operate by it's collecting true, the groundwater. Like yeah. A wider well is always going to be, like assuming that the depth is the same, mm -hmm. a wider well is always going to be better. Is it? I don't know. Easier to pull out of. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's easier to pull out of. Well, that's definitely that's, true. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of the ability, it's okay. going to in general contain more water. Uh huh. Right. Um, the smooth talking thing is another thing, which is that uh, when you want to end this, then the other person can hold sway over you through your lave through like talking to your mind or to your heart and convincing you. There's a great scene, you know this, I know, but in Arrested Development um, with uh, 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 the the uh, the other uh, lawyer when they try to stop having the affair. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to send the scene in the discussion chat. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, <laughs> a great depiction of this. Um, but like they, they basically like, they can talk each other into like, into like repeating the, uh, the offense very, very easily. Um, yeah. Okay. So we didn't actually finish the, the Meiri. Let's see. Let's go back to the Meiri here. Uh, what? Not good for me to watch that. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> it's a great show. Great show. Okay. Oh, that scene. Oh, that scene. Okay. Um, tana bni libcha li kolomar um shiyu kol makshul. You gotta film me on later. Kol makshul sacha konos umuhuvanos la abodasi. So all of your thoughts. Oh, see, this is weird. So Rabbeinu Yonah does this also. We'll read the Rabbeinu Yonah in a second. He says that this is God talking, which doesn't quite fit into the local cluster. In fact, you said you looked to see if anyone says it's yeah. about God, but yeah, well, for not for this cluster, but for the earlier one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, all of your thoughts should turn and be oriented towards my service. Okay, so it's narrow. Um, so he says it happens instantaneously. You just, you walk along and then you just fall in. Okay. Um, I, I was picturing the wells from all the like fairy tales where it's like a built up nice like brick thing. And like, it's, it's like above ground, but I guess that's not really how, you have to be like on a certain level of wealth to like invest in a well like that. But yeah. That's, that's the market of wells. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I wonder if that's why they do it. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Okay. The Amuka. Shahaliya mimena kaveda. So it is deep. Is that um, uh, to to? It's hard to go up from it. Ube'er tsara shlo yuchol lihis hapech ba mitzad al tzad. You can't move from side to side. Pchin inyan hazona. So too with hazona. Shah pesi yilakid ba pitom. The pesi um, is going to be uh, ensnared with her uh, immediately. He part me mena. Uh, he part of me mena kasha, and separating her from her will be uh, difficult. Bein tach bula lihinato me mena below onesh, and he won't be able to escape without uh, harm. I have to read. Do I still not have? Every time I think I put a tanakh back there, and uh, I must put it back or something like that. Uh, thank you. Um, this is the one I actually wanted to read um, last time. So the 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 parak, thank you. Even though she shows up in many places, um, the parak that is most about this woman is uh, the seventh parak of Mishlei. And I just want to read this in English because again, I think this is really good for evoking the emotional um, uh, uh, resonance. Um, so he, so I'm gonna read the entirety of chapter seven. My child, take uh, heed my words and store up my commandments with yourself. Heed my commandments and live and heed my Torah as the apple of your eyes. Bind them on your fingers and scribe them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding a friend that they may safeguard you from a forbidden woman. Okay, so let's look at the the, uh, the Lushan uses here. Um, they will safeguard you from an Isha Zara. Okay, so that's not in our positive. Minachria. Uh, from a strange woman, um, uh, woman Amareha Hechalika, her uh, with this, uh, who makes her words glib. Okay, smooth talker. For what? Slick. Slick, yeah, smooth. Apple of your eyes, you're going to say that all Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, for I have, okay, so here's the story. For I have looked out upon from my window, upon from my house, through my lattice, and I saw among the fools, I discerned among the youths, a lad who lacked an understanding heart, 
passing through the marketplace near her corner, and he strode towards her house. In the twilight as daylight wanes, in the blackness of night and darkness. Then behold, a woman approached him, bedecked as a harlot, with siege in her heart. She coos and she entices. <laughs> I always picture like a pigeon. <laughs> no, no, I think she's probably not doing that. Her feet do not dwell at home. Sometimes in the courtyard, sometimes in the streets, she lurks at every corner. She seized him and kissed him. She thrust forth her face and said to him, I have vowed to bring peace offerings, and today I have fulfilled my vow. Not exactly the best pickup line, but I guess it works back then. <laughs> um, that is why I went out towards you to seek your counsel and I have found you. I have decked my bed with spreads. Carved bed poles are hung with Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us sate ourselves with love until the morning. Let us rejoice with acts of love. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a distant journey. He has taken the money pouch with him. He will come home at the appointed time. This is another thing, by the way, that I think the Zona and the Nahria are interchangeable because it depicted her as, what was it? It Zona, right? uh, It did not say Zona. It said Zara and Nahria. Oh, no, it did say Zona, it did say Zona. Yeah, she's Zona in the source slave. But also it depicted her as, as like at being at the corner and like her place and stuff. And then she's saying she has a husband. So I, I think it's meant to be like a fluid muscle. Um, she sways him with her abundant sophistication. She thrusts him with the glibness of her lips. He follows her unsuspectingly like an ox to the slaughter, rushing like a venomous snake to discipline the foolish one until the arrow splits his liver. He is like a bird hurrying to the trap, unaware that his life will be lost. Yeah. So now, children, listen to me and heed the words of my mouth. Do not incline your heart to her ways. Do not stray in her pathways, for she has felled many victims. The number of her slain is huge. Her house is the way to, to the grave, descending to the chambers of death. That's the end of the, the chapter. And then one more I got to read because we've almost read all of the ones in, the, in the Hagdama. Um, the, uh, the, the At the very end of uh, chapter nine, uh, the, the, I, this, is my, this is one of my favorite imageries. Uh, the woman of foolishness croons, the woman of simpleness who does not know anything. That's also a different woman. She sits at the door of her house and uh, on a chair at the city heights to call out to the passerby who makes their ways upright. So here's what she says. Whoever is a simpleton, let him turn here. Okay, as for the one who lacks an understanding heart, she says to him, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret places is pleasing. Now here's my favorite line. But he does not know that dead men are there, that those she invites are in the deepest grave. So the imagery there is like she's sitting at the door calling him in and there are corpses piled up inside her house, you know? Uh, like it's, it's, it's just really, really vivid uh, imagery there. Yeah, um, why did we go there? Because, oh, because that's what he's referencing when he says the pessy will be trapped uh, immediately. Um, and there's no way to escape her once uh, once he's there. So so the immediacy. So what's the much of the immediacy? Because it sounds like, I mean, he does see her, and like it, it's not like uh, it's not exactly like falling into a pit. You know, it's not like like you're walking along. Like, whoops, you know, I just uh, you know uh, went to the zona. Like, you know. So what what, what is the pitum part? It seems like it's describing the situation that she's trying to create. And then, mm -hmm. and then they're describing you're building up to the one point where it's like you're at that decision, you're at right. the crossroads, and then she's talking to you. It's either come to my house, right? Or believe me, okay. And then you have two options, and then yeah. she follows her house. It doesn't seem like anything. Yeah, you're just going to someone's house. Yeah, but then you're in then then you're in the situation. And you're pissed. Ah, you okay. Get out. All right, that's good. Enough. So another one like this is that the. The actual, there is a point of no return, which is instantaneous, but you don't know which point along the road that will be, you know? And I think, let's actually read the Rebbein Yona, uh, because he actually, I think, says that in uh, in explicit E terms. Okay, I don't know how explicit. So last word is Lee, okay? So listen to me, Lee Rasi of Avasi, to love, fear of me and love of me. So he's taking that this is God, okay? The heart is desire uh, and lust. Alkane, he's here, she eaten as a lave kulo elavis bar, saying that you should give your entire heart, all your desires to God. Kihova al Adam Shalo Yixo, Velo Yis Ave Zulasi La Avodas Hashem Isala. A person is obligated to only desire and yearn for the Avodas Hashem. The Shiyu Tabosa mina Olam Hasibos La Avodas Hashem Bilvad. And his taibas of this world should only serve as causes for Avodas Hashem. I think that means that you should use worldly things to serve God. Of uh, you, you, your eyes should guard my ways. Uh, and good actions. Okay, here, here is where he says, I think what Benji was saying. Kishu Amuka Zona, Hakarev El Pesach Besa Yilaki Pitom. So the one who comes close to the door of her house will be ensnared immediately. Just like a guy who falls into the pit that he doesn't guard himself from. Okay, <laughs> there's an answer. Any woman who is not your wife is called a nafria. In other words, not even another man's wife, just any woman who's not your wife. It's saying that the, uh, a strange woman 
even though she's not a Zona, is like a narrow well. In Yihyu Ragil, Ima, the Sicha, Uvihis Takus, Bipaneha, Koyom. If you are uh, familiar with her, accustomed with her in conversation and looking at her face every day, Yosef Libo Lihimashik Ahareha, then you'll be drawn after, uh, your heart will be drawn after her. The Ischadish Bocheshek Beruach Zanunim, and it will be generated in you desire and a spirit of licentiousness until you stray and stumble. That's a different muscle of the well. So just like the waters of a well that renew themselves uh, constantly. Okay, now this is the part that I said it was like Benji. Kain min hasicha. So from conversation, yavu el hamare, you'll come to look at her. Umimenu, and then from looking at her, el hahirhur, to fantasizing about her. Umimenu el hamaga, and from uh, from uh, 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 fantasizing about her to making America great again. No, to touching her. Ad asher yavor vipol al shucha el shucha hachet shucha hachet until you fall into the pit of uh, of, of the hate. Okay, so you never know at what point you're going to have that cross that point of no return. And it's funny because when you first, I don't know if you have this feeling, but when you, I'll speak for myself, as a modern Orthodox Jew, right? We are not typically in positions where we are like the Haredim, where we like completely avoid like any like uh, contact with women. And like, we take down all pictures and all magazines, you know, like that's taking it to the extreme. And so it's very easy to look at this and be like, ah, eh, that's just like a, 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 a Haredi thing, you know? But it's, you do see this a lot when people have coworkers who are women and they are familiar and, with them and they talk with them and they, in many times, spend more time with their coworkers who are women than with their actual wives. And then this phenomenon starts to happen and then you end up like falling into that, uh, into that pit. Yeah. Isn't this also Enechem um, before Lavatam? Uh, this is Enechem before Lavatam. Yes, he is taking that approach, it seems. Yeah. yeah. Why you that approach too? Like not here, but- uh, Yeah, like yeah. I find they disagree with this different. No, no. I mean, even even the Malbim uh, agree that it's both, right? That it can go in both directions. But the Malbim was saying, I, I think what the Malbim was saying is definitely true that a heart that does have the right uh, mitos is not going to be aroused. But like the Sefer Chinuch says, is over time through actions you can change your heart, you know. And then that you know. But yeah, I, I don't know how to uh, reconcile the two. But I think they're both true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was going to, oh, we're, we're over time. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's, I, I, uh, a lot of ideas here. <laughs> I almost don't want to try to summarize it uh, because I feel like there's been a lot of ideas. Let's let it percolate. And then I want to come back next week to do the, um, uh, what do you call it? To do the uh, next puzzle and then to the, the Derek Nisra. Also, I'm going to stop this, but I have a non-recording part uh, just for practical, uh, practical things. Um,